I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith and Snare for podcast in which two friends talk about cars at Rensport Reunion 7 in America. America! It doesn't work yeah, right when I said, yeah, I drove all night, this is what I'm now explaining to you. I have already driven all night. That's past tense. That, but... that, will, that will be exactly the guy thinking, I'm going to surprise her. I'm going to be really romantic. I know I'm not romantic enough. I'm mm. going to drive all night. I'm just mm. going to turn up, and she'll be there, and she'll just she'll she'll, she'll open her arms, and it will be wonderful. And we'll just spend the whole night making love, and she'll go. No, I'm actually not here. I'm staying at my sister's house. Yeah, I, said, I forgot to tell you. I've got to go to Warwick on business. So um... anyway, um, welcome to. America. America. <laughs> We're on American soil. American soil. And uh, we're in the breakfasting area. Of a hotel of a in hotel. Monterey Bay. Monterey Bay. Yeah. It's very nice. But we're not here for Pebble Beach because that's already been. No? So we're here for the Rensport. <laughs> it's Thursday morning, the first day of Rensport. Uh, we don't really know what to expect. No. It's at Laguna Seca, we know that. Yeah. Home of the famous uh, corkscrew corner. Yeah. Corner? I suppose it is a corner, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a wonderful track, actually. Have you ever driven around Laguna Seca? No. I have been a passenger. Mm, me too. I think we were in the same car. <laughs> were you, were you, were you, did you go in a separate car? It was a, it was a Jag. Um, yeah. Now, which... Was it an XJR? Super Jag? Yes. I'm not even sure it was an XJR. It was, a, it was an XJ, definitely. The sort of last shape XJ. A very long wheelbase thing, whatever it was. Being driven by the then boss of Jaguar. Yes. What was his name? German guy. Yes. Gosh, we should know that. He... He did a bit of racing. Yeah. And... He didn't quite sort of nail some of the corners of Laguna Seca, which is fair enough. He'd never driven around there, but then he was seemingly quite annoyed and spent ages telling me how he'd never driven around there before. I was like, it's all right. It's okay. I would have done the same. I don't, yeah. I don't lose sleep over it, but yeah, he was very late. The problem here is, and this is why I've never seen this corner before. I, I know, I know, neither have I. Don't worry. We had fun. It's okay. That's what I will do when I drive someone around the Nürburgring. <laughs> but, I'll, but it'll be a much longer conversation because <laughs> it'll be, and another corner that yes, I didn't remember. Right. Now, let me explain why I crashed here as well. <laughs> um, so, yes, we haven't been to the track yet, but we have. We arrived last night. Um, so, uh, the story so far, previously on Smith & Sniff, he, we flew in from Heathrow. Yeah. Lovely flight. Yeah, really good flight. Um, I was sitting by a familiar-looking man that I couldn't quite place at first. Yeah. And then realised it was land speed record holder Andy Green out of off of driving fast and being a fighter pilot. Yeah. And um, he seemed like... I didn't talk to him. He's a jolly chap. He's a jolly chap. Now, I've heard him yeah. being interviewed and thought he was a serious man. I think he has a race face or a, mm. or a you know... A speed face. F- flight. He does have a speed face. That's <laughs> exactly what he has. <laughs> maybe, like, maybe when he's driven really, really fast, it sort of it squashes your brain, the bit where your sense of humour lives. Yes. Like, you know, like putting a foam thing into a, <laughs> into a bag. And it's got to be allowed a bit of time to naturally just expand back to its natural state. And that's, you, your face goes a bit Easter Island. Because of, yes. the, because of the general forces applied. Oh. So going fast makes you look really serious. Yeah. But now he's not been driving fast for a while. No. He's quite jaunty. He was very jolly. Very and jolly. Um, he was having a good old chat with various passengers. And then I, when I came down to see you, because we weren't sitting next to each other, I came down to see you and, and I was daring you to, <laughs> to go over and just keep going, how fast are we going? How yeah. fast are we going now? Yeah. How fast are we going? And then one of the other passengers actually did <laughs> Yeah, they did. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. And to Green, how fast are we going now? <laughs> he, he was very he, gracious about it. He was at the bar with his wife. The, the sort of like um, virgin um, freestanding bar thing at the end of we the We were seat. in the posh part of the plane. We were, it must clear. be said. Uh, and so thank you very much for that, Porsche. But um, I, I was trying to get some sleep because I had very little sleep the night before. And I, uh, I got woken up. By, mm. by the, the tones of Andy Green, <laughs> Wing Commander Green, because he's got a very commanding voice, because he was yes. a commander. Yeah, so. yeah. No, he's got... Did you also say, because I couldn't... He was behind me, but to, um, you could see him as the plane was taking off, and he was sort of, like, on full alert, just he keeping was, an eye on He was properly me and Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was. Because he was looking towards the front of the plane, um, and so as the plane was taking off and going through low, low cloud cover, mm. he was looking left, looking right, 
and looking left again, and you could just see he was eyeing up all of the trim of the plane and yeah. the way in which he was it was it was thrusting up into the sky. And then when we cleared the cloud cover, he actually he just did a left and a right, and then he, he nodded to himself. <laughs> he nodded to himself like, yeah, that, that, that's yeah. satisfactory. We're up. I'm okay. yeah. and, and then he picked his paper up and carried on reading it. But yeah, it was always like... Right, we have achieved flight. We're through the danger zone now. Yeah. It's like, it's, I suppose, yeah, that is, isn't it? That's, the, that's that and the, the touching the ground thing. It's, but I mean, landing, that's what it's called. Also known as landing. Like, <laughs> touching the ground thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to your captain speaking, we'll shortly be um, touching the ground, uh, I believe it's called. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you sleeve. We're scheduled to do the going into the sky thing in about uh, ten minutes. Um, no, he. I, I, he then we. It got a bit bumpy quite soon after we took off, didn't it? And, yeah. and I heard him just sort of casually say, almost to himself, something yeah. about the Gulf Stream. Yeah. He just went. Yeah, I think it's because he's because he's <clears throat> the, the military procedures are ingrained in him. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, they can never be undone. So everything refers back to a military procedure, yeah. or a, and you know he just won't panic in the most. If, if it had all gone really turbulent, yes. Oh yeah, he'd have just he just be just, just gone. Mm, just so just turned the page on his paper. He would. He'd still yeah. be reading that just paper. Kind of maybe gone. <laughs> Gulf Stream. That's right. Yeah. Well, I said, but it's reassuring to find that uh, Wing Commander Andy Green is on your flight because if both the pilots collapsed for yeah. some reason, yeah, he could get that thing down. Yeah. I didn't want to chat to him, although I, I did, but I didn't want to disturb him. I've interviewed him a couple of times, and when I first moved to um, where I live in, in Stamford in Lincolnshire, he was the wing commander of RAF Wittering, which is only about three miles away mm. from, really close to my office. And he um, he did like a local, uh, what was it? He did a lo- local chat in a church hall one night. It was a ticketed event. <laughs> And I went to it. I was the uh, I was the youngest person there by about forty years, oh. and it was really fascinating. There are who else? There's someone else on our flight. Who was that? That older gentleman um, that we couldn't place, and then you found out. David Piper. David Piper, nine one sevens. David Piper. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's I don't know how old he is now, but he's exceptionally old, and um, he's still. I think he still owns. The 917 that he bought new mm. after being a privateer racer at um, Le Mans. That's, I mean, he, he is definitely of, of advancing years, and but not so advancing years that he still couldn't get himself on a plane, Yeah, fly 11 hours to Northern California to come to Rennspaud, because yeah. I guess it's magnetic for Porsche people, and Porsche, I presume, invited him because he was... On the same, then on the shuttle bus from the yeah. airport to here. Oh, and cool. again, I, I never, never met him. Mm. I'd like to ask him because he will still definitely remember what it's like to drive a 917. I imagine it's one of those things you don't forget. I can imagine it. Yeah, very light steering, and of course, a lovely automatic gearbox. No, I'm so sorry. I'm thinking of the Jaguar XJ. Um, <laughs> 917, 917. No, it's gone. Nothing. It's the one that's really deathy and fast. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that one. Oh, yes. I remember the first time I drove it, and I thought to myself, ah! <laughs> I think we didn't have a term for it back then, but now I know it to be FFF. Yes. Um, I, I remember once joking to, uh, to dear, dear, sweet, sweet Richard Atwood <laughs> that that thing's a fucking death trap and it's going to kill us all. And Richard nodded <laughs> and carried on with his plate of beans in it. <laughs> and then said, I'll regret this after the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be uh, anti-lagging my way around the track. So, uh, well, that's where we are. Yes, we had a, we had a lovely flight. This is a bit, bit name dropping. Oh, yeah, oh, my God. What we haven't said is that last week's podcast, you thought you saw Richard Branson in an airport with a printed-out itinerary yes. yesterday because we were allowed into the Virgin Lounge because we were being <laughs> sent posh class. And who should, there? Who, who should be there but bloody Branson? I didn't see him, but you did. I you went to you, loo you just said, Branson's Branson. over there. I went, what, really, really? Or the guy that I saw last week who was going to Magaluf yeah. <laughs> with his sort of bargain ticket. Went, no, no, actual Branson. It was weird. I came back from the loo and there was Branson having his picture taken with some people in, the, in his own lounge. And I don't know whether he just pops in to check everything's OK or what. But by the time I, I, I practically ran across the place to get back to our table to tell you that I'd just seen Branson. He's awesome. And then we couldn't see where he'd gone. Because I mean, that would have been worthy of uh, asking for a photo. I think Branson and Noel Edmonds, who we mentioned a couple of mm. podcasts ago, because he was at Goodwood, they've shed they've shed their same hair. 
Yes, they have, and beard. For 40, possibly 50 years. Yes, it's Beard and hair combo, and it suits them both. They're actually a similar build. Yeah, I guess so. But what I think is interesting is they both sort of got to a point in about, what, 1973, and just locked in their hair and beard choice. Yeah. Just went, that's it. Yeah, like when you lock in a mortgage for a very long time. Yeah, fixed rate hairstyle. Yeah, that's what they've done. I think Knowles is. Maybe they've both gone a bit shaggier at times, but only a little bit, just to sort of, you know, show that they're willing to make subtle changes. They can deviate ever so slightly. Yeah, but not too much. No. Because have you ever seen a picture of Noel Evans without his beard? I bet he looks awful. He looks weird, but your eye kind of fills in the beard. It's odd. It's like having a plaster cast taken off and you can still feel it's there, that kind of thing. You go, I can still see the beard, but he hasn't got a beard. Your I, brain can't process it. I might, see, my dad had a beard for a long time. I've probably said this before. And I remember when he got rid of it, and I was, I was actually outraged. <laughs> <laughs> I was outraged because it just, it, that wasn't my father. Yeah, well, I did that because you know, I have that stupid idea that you should have a full shave every so often to reset your face. Yeah. There's no basis in any medical no. logic, but I still, I was thinking of doing it next week actually when I get home. But the first time I did it, in front of my kids, I realised that my daughter, particularly, had never seen me without a beard. No. So they were in the bath together, and I had a shave in the bathroom while they were there to make a point of showing them what I was doing, and they just absolutely could not give a shit. Oh, really? Yeah, they they were just like, well, we know it's still you, Daddy. So I, I, I did shave my beard off um, a few years back now, and my daughter, I walked in the room, and I think my daughter just turned to me and just went, no, no. <laughs> my no. wife does that to me. Yeah, like, not my dad, that's not she my She always dad. goes, where's your chin gone? What's yeah. that, you look like a turtle. <laughs> and you go, I can't grow this back quick enough. No. Well, then, then I regretted it. Well, yeah, I always, I like the clean feeling of it. Well, I, I didn't have a beard for many years. Hmm. Uh, when sideburns and, and a soul patch. As some <laughs> listeners may know, but I um, now I'm, 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 I'm it's beard beard all the way now. Yeah, beard till I die. I can't decide. I might have a shave next week and then I might just let it grow back, but then not trim it at all and get a massive. Like that guy, the, the cabin crew guy on our plane, who had a huge beard and then yeah. that good sort of peaky blinders hair. And he tweaked the edges of the tash, didn't yeah, he? He'd yeah. wax the edges. It's a really good look. And we realised though that of course you can do that peaky blinders look as cabin crew because you get given a waistcoat. Yes. So it all fits. Yeah. It's quite a good sort of way of doing it. Whereas I think it. doing it with a sports t shirt. No. I'm not sure work. it has the same gravity. No. Or an extremely loose Chicago Bulls vest. Yeah. <laughs> for the nineties. <laughs> One more thing. We're gonna head off to Rensbolt in a minute and we'll Spot we'll it. we'll come back to this and we'll record some more there. But we'll have to just mention the thing that happened at two o'clock this morning. Oh gosh. Which we both like the first thing I mentioned to you and you were already messaging me about at the writing. same time. <laughs> yeah. Is there was an incredibly loud bang outside the hotel at two o'clock in the morning and there was an explosion. It was an explosion. Well, at home, I was just gone, who's laying off fireworks? But well, that was my first thought. And then the second thought was, oh, wait, I'm in America. That was probably a gun. Because the irony is fireworks are illegal here, but of course guns aren't. It's the opposite way around at home. It's great. Yeah. Very bad, but it, it, I did not get back to sleep immediately after that because no. I was... And just like you said before we started recording, waiting for the sound of sirens. Yeah, completely. It and was that loud. But there wasn't one. No. It was, it was so loud. So like, I yeah. felt the air pressure change in my room. We need to, we and it ruined my my record of never getting um, jet lag. Oh, are you feeling jet lag then? No, but it, it means I woke up. Oh, uh, I see. At right. some yeah, point, yeah. I woke up for a while, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it was weird. Right. Anyway, well, Ren, Renspold beckons. Breakfast done. We're going to go to Renspold, uh, <laughs> and um, and we'll we'll speak to you after this uh, short interstitial piece of music. <laughs> Well, 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 roll up, roll up for Ren Spot. Here we go. Mother Tech Raceway. So, uh, I like this guy. Yeah. And, and he's talking through one of those proper old fashioned racetrack tannery things that just looks like a big, the end of a trombone. <laughs> roll up, roll up. It's like a trombone that's been painted grey and then someone's accidentally kicked it down the street. Yeah. <laughs> How are they battered when it's like on a 12 foot pole? What's been happening I think, to it? I think because racetracks, when there's nobody racing and nobody here, they're very desolate, wildlifey places. Yeah, I was just talking to someone about this. It's been pecked by pelican. How bleak! And I was talking to somebody who works at Porsche, who said, you know, they've been here all week setting this up. Weather Tech 
and how bleak a racetrack is when you arrive and there's no dressing at all. And they have done a nice job. It is so, well, because, because as you know, Porsche have got a hell of a colour palette background. And race cars, because when they're sponsored, we're in the paddock, well, that's where we're stood right now. When they're sponsored by certain companies, the liveries are amazing. Big, vivid swooshes and... Yeah. Lovely fonts, sweet, sweet fonts. The, that's it, the graphic design of all of the sort of banners and stuff they've put around is very good, very yeah. tasteful. Yeah. I like it. Um, for people who maybe don't know what we're on about, the, the whole thing, Ren Spol, is this uh, four day long Porsche festival at yeah. Laguna Seca, the racetrack. So the paddock is full of cars. There's pretty much constantly racing going on on the track. Yeah. And then there's other things going on. The biggest cue for anything here is for the merchandise shop, yeah. which is pretty exciting extraordinary it, and I know that the Porsche people I was just accidentally privy to a conversation the Porsche people are genuinely a bit worried at how big the queue is they've got, they've got a nice problem on their hands everybody <laughs> wants to buy their t-shirts which you know, it's not a problem that we have because we always forget to mention that we sell t-shirts we, we yeah and ours don't say RS on them however uh, I'm a bit annoyed because my one piece of official Porsche merchandise which I've had for a while it, which is an, an embroidered cap yeah from a launch that I forget the name of but I've forgotten to bring it. I've, I left it in. I left it in the back of my own Porsche, Richard. Have you? You haven't. This is going out on Monday. Yeah. Well, I'm you just. Oh, I'm leaving it there. <laughs> that consider it a carrot dangle. Okay. Um, so we. Well, I, you've wandered a bit more than I have, but um, suffice to say, if you like Porsches, this is a good event. If you don't like Porsches, I, I wouldn't come to this because it's all Porsches but if you can think of a Porsche they've got it here seems to be the general this is like this is like Goodwood Fistful of Seed and, and Goodwood Revival mashed together for one mark yes it is and it's not just cars because we're standing here um, on the edge of the paddock looking at a, we'll come over, we'll tap it. a tastefully not restored Porsche diesel yeah. tractor listen to this listen to this that's, That's the mudguard yeah. of, of a diesel junior tractor. It is patinated. It's also, they've chucked down a bit of cardboard because it's dripping slightly. <laughs> it's weeping from the underneath. Oils and fluids and things. So it is weeping a bit, but um, it's, uh, it's also, it says, it's, as they do, it's got these lovely badges on. So it's Porsche diesel and then it says super underneath, but from a distance, I thought it said sniper. Sniper? <laughs> Why would you need a sniper tractor? Oh no, he's very slowly getting away. Speaking of which, there is tractor racing happening this week. There weekend. is Porsche not, tractors. Not right now, this is Thursday, but on uh, Saturday and Sunday there's going to be Porsche there is. tractor racing. Uh, maximum of about 15, but apparently it's quite competitive. I hear it is maximum speed of 15 miles an hour, and uh, but, but being as there's a lot of race drivers who take part in it, it gets competitive. And I, um, I put my name down early doors to try and get... Uh, chance to race, compete within this event. I'll find out later today whether I will. I'll be amongst the likes of, uh, let me think, Mark Webber, uh, the fastest man in the world, Andy Andy Green, he's yep. taking part. Uh, I, I was just talking to Justin Bell, son of Le Mans De- winner Derek Bell. Derek. And I, we saw Derek at the bar last night. Yes, we did. With amazing cam tail hair. Lovely hair. And looking, he doesn't age. Him, Tiff, all those guys good bit like wiry sinewy build yeah uh, can cope with a lot of booze it seems was uh, was Derek Bell having a boozy drink last night I think he was having a glass of wine or something I think he was he? but it's yeah. probably you know he could easily have another nine I if he wanted to s- I have so much admiration I, have, I aspire to be that racing driver of a certain era that's immune to any illnesses <laughs> or anything <laughs> how do they do it though I don't know the, the thing is also um it's quite warm here now. Yeah. I think it's forecast to be about 20 degrees. The sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky. So it is warm. Yeah. You need to stay hydrated, particularly if you're walking around a lot. I wonder, can we keep an eye on Derek Bell and see if any fluid passes his lips all day or if he is true tiff spec? Is he, I was going to say, I don't know if he's an, an old school non-hydrator or not. I, I, have, I have to have a look. It could just be all day, drinks nothing, get, yep. gets to the bar in the evening and yep. then lets it loose. Immediately has a really hearty Syrah. A <laughs> full-bodied Rioja. Yeah. That's something. all the hydration I need, thank you. Um, funnily enough, I was thinking, talking to Riara of Derry Bell, I'm just looking, there's a 94, I think that's a turbo over there, look, it's got the flared wheel. Let's go have a gander, let's go have a gander. There's so much stuff here, honestly, it's yeah. ridiculous. And you've already had... I had a look at this car, so we've come to the sort of a no-through road part of the paddock, because it's a bit quieter for the mic, because there's a lot of revving sixes of revving. and flat eights about. And um, where we are, yeah, there's a couple of 924 track cars, 
yeah. which I think in track guys with the wider arches and things look proper. This is, do you know what this is also, this line up here is a good example of what is appealing about this is that, that there's no snobbery within the Porsche world because there are two 94s here which you think they'd be sort of looked down upon. Oh, this is only for this is only for 911s but it's not and there's a 996 next to them probably yeah. the sort of least revered 911 at the moment but that's still welcome yeah. everything's welcome there's and we went past some 986 fours. boxsters which yes. looked ace looked really good a yeah. race trim yeah and when they're dropped they look mega they look hard yeah, with yeah, the, they, they clip do. on hard tops some of them as well what's going on here there's a 356 at the end here right, this 356 here or is it okay. 356 we've got to say yeah, yeah. actually I, I spoke to the I spoke to the guy that's re- rejuvenated it and he, he did refer to it as a 356 and um, but this car is a it's 19, it is a 1956 356 bit of a tongue twister mm. <laughs> it's totally bo- bodily totally unrestored it's just been it's had its drivetrain rebuilt but it was bought new by a chap called William R. French, who I didn't know the name of until I was reading this lovely information plaque next to the car. But it turns out he was one of the guys uh, involved in the moon landing, one of the, one of the aerospace engineers. Uh, he's an engineer. And he bought it new, yeah. in, immediately raced it, debumpered. Whoa, look at this. At the weekends. And so then, and it's and it and he took it off the road when it was a decade old. When the when the the whole rate moon race thing ramped up, yeah. and he basically didn't have the time to dick around yeah. on the track in a three five six, and it got pulled out of a um, of, of the resting place of where he would parked it pretty much about um, about five years ago, and it's now on the road with its. I, I will put a picture up for our for our patrons because I took a couple of shots of it. There's still a, a sort of outline of where the front had had. Um, like a, ra- oh. a racy kind of yeah, either a cool? white patch or a yellow yeah, patch yeah, yeah. it look, could have been a race incident crash Maybe. damage I don't know. yeah some scuffage there as well but, but it says um, that when William was a young California aerospace engineer in the 1950s at the age of 25 he bought this car at a time when racing your sports car was the deal well, imagine being able to buy this when you were 25 so cool so, and I was reading the, the engine block had a crack in it it's a magnesium case on these they had oh. to have it specially repaired which yeah. is not easy to do no and if you go around to the back end you'll see the engine's mint but look, look go and have a look at the sun visors Rich God the sun what visors the what are the sun visors let's have a look around here sun visors are oh. are they are they like they're, they're sun warped oh, yeah they're, 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 they're not meant to be that shape no they're completely oh, they're warped from the, from yeah, the sun yeah they are wow it's such a, a California sunshine. And next to it, look at what colour, because I'm a bit colour blind. What is that magenta? Or is I it don't know if it's magenta, it's a purple. We're looking at a purple 911, an early 70s yeah. or late 60s one. Well, Let's have a look, it's got a, it is a 72 911S. Oh, it's... Oh, shit, it's for sale. Oh, no. Oh, shit. No, it's matching numbers, correct transmission, fully restored in Italy, four kilometres since. Oh, shit text this number if you're interested well of course I'm interested I just don't necessarily have the money that they're going to ask unless it's five grand and I'm going to say that it's not because it's beautiful but can you imagine if it is five grand it's just no everyone's too scared because I'm always too scared of, I don't know about I'm, I can't be the only one listening to this who's too scared to inquire when a car just says offers or yeah or you know let me know if you're interested because like, of course I'm interested <laughs> of course. but I'm <laughs> but I mean like my idea of what it's worth and what I'm going to pay might be very different and then you get into that slight the embarrassed like well I am interested but you're, you're going to hate me now because I'm a time waster because yeah. you wanted 50 grand I was going to give you 12 <laughs> you know, there's a bit of a <laughs> there's a bit of a difference we seem to be a little far apart <laughs> yeah. on our numbers here yes um, I, I've used the term you know when you as I get a bit older and I try and haggle politely yeah I use the term could we come a bit south of the asking <laughs> price <laughs> I like to use the term north and stuff. I go. I think what you're asking is it's quite a bit north of what I'm intending to pay. Could you throw people off the negotiating game by going? Could we go a bit east of this price? And while they're trying to think of what the fuck you mean, you can lowball them for. Well, unless you're one of these mad people who just says, "I give you the asking price, but I also want you to throw in a Porsche towel." <laughs> Can I have a brand new beach towel, real fluffy beach towel? I'll give you the asking price. But it has but to be a real one, a real Porsche towel. You've got to let me take one item of furniture from your house. Yeah, but there are but there are some odd deals like that, aren't yeah, there? Probably, yes. Now we're, we're the bit you can hear a car idling to our right, a race car. What is like this? Is the Tag Heuer display? I've yeah. had a, while you were doing something else, Rich. Yeah. I I was in here nosing the first and only I think car 
to enter for, and Porsche to enter Formula One. Oh. It's in 1962. Go and have a look at like how much fuel is around the driver. Oh, is it a lot? I haven't oh looked at this. Um, oh my. What, what is revving up? And another 6924 race car as well. Oh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. With the fixed lights under Perspex covers. Tight nut. Is that idling? Is that a 935 idling? Uh, I actually can't tell. There's a lot of I things. Think it's that one yeah. there, 1979. Uh, 935. Just yeah. looking at this Type 804, the uh, one of four cars Porsche built to compete in uh, F1 in the early 60s. Um, the only car, it says on this thing, I'm reading this now, only car completely designed and built by Porsche to win a Formula 1 race. Um, oh, I see, there is a lot of... i thrown out of it because I've never owned a Tag Heuer watch. It's not because I didn't want to, I just haven't. <laughs> well, again, because when they say offers, they don't mean six quid. No, it's a shame. For Tag Heuer watches. Or, as I think purists, they just like to call them Hoyers. It's a what? Even, they're like, purists like to call them Hoyers, even if it's a Tag Hoyer. Oh, hang on, there's Magnus Walker over what? there. Oh, what? That's Magnus Walker. He's wearing a, a wicker wizard's hat. Yes, he is. What the fuck? He is, he's just there. He's like, how many metres away from us? Uh, seven metres away? Yeah, seven or eight. Wow. Give or take. Um, I'm distracted, there's a 914 over there. I, I like 914s, and it's just, again, no snobbery. It's parked next to a uh, 911 uh, racing car and, and something else I can't see, but yeah. That's a six cylinder as well, that 914. It's oh, a 914 9 6. Yeah, it is, because it's a competition car. Oh, so and and just super casual, uh, that is a. Um, is that a 906? Yes, uh, I think it is. It's either a 906 or a 904. Hang on, let's go and have a little look. Um, there's one of the things as well we, we were saying this morning that was absolutely amazing is that, that just uh, there was just a, a 917 yeah. just driving through the paddock casually if you like no chaperone nothing it just was on its way to go to the track I guess and um, this is a 906 yes acquired by Ben Pond for Racing Team Holland in 1966 what do you know about oh. Ben Pond Richard? Uh, I, he's one of the, my favourite um, dishes to order if I want something that's quite rice based <laughs> I don't know. What do you know about Ben Pond? Ben Pond was the Volkswagen importer for ah. Holland, and he convinced Volkswagen to build the Type 2. I sort yes. of invented the transporter. Yeah. So he's a bit of a dude in the in the, 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 the Volkswagen world. Yeah. Clearly likes his Porsches as well. We were looking at that very long wheelbase Type 2 this morning with the, the, the car transporter and just speculating on how incredibly it slow it must be. 50 Spider on it, was it? Uh, yes, I think it was, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. This car down here, with the, so it's a 356 with a fared in front and rear wheels. Yes, what was this for? Though? This... It's the, it's the Gamund. Ah, so these are the early... Very early. Very early 356s. This was the first Porsche, I think, to compete in endurance racing. Yeah, look, there you go. Had a class win at the 1951-24 uh, hour. Yeah. This was the start of Porsche's relationship with endurance racing. But also, I noticed... Um, it achieved success on the West Coast in the early 50s with a chap called Johnny Van Newman, Von Newman. Yeah. It brought immediate success to the Porsche brand and made, quickly made California and Porsche's largest export market. This, ah. thing, this is as jelly mould as it gets. Isn't it? It's good, I like it. Um, all right, well, it's very noisy here. Yeah. I hope this isn't too unpleasant to listen to, but um, well, oh, there's a 98 over there in race trim. Look at that! It's got a very elaborately strange splitter on the front, front as well. splitter that looks like a fireplace guard um we'll we'll pause for now but as i said and you can probably gather from all the things we talked about if you like porsches do you know what if you don't like porsches come here if you like small honda motorcycles and scooters because oh, yeah. there's a shed load of them they're often chaperoning like angry won't drive very slowly race cars around the paddock yeah yeah, yeah. so there's a guy or a woman on board blowing a whistle really aggressively yeah. <laughs> i quite like that I'm pretty sure Freddie Mercury had a unitard. <laughs> it's a Harlequin unitard. Day two at Rensboltz. Oh, uh, it's. Uh... Well, the excitement the, continues. The excitement never ends. Uh, but last night was good. We uh, went and looked at some 959s. 
Oh, it was great. Um, seven nine five nine. Seven in a, in a thing, and then we came over here to another bit of the paddock and met a bloke called Bruce Canapan. Yeah, who people might have heard of because he famously. It's not really resto model, but he updates 959s. He can... Yeah. He was the first it, man uh, to get a 959 road legal in America. He did that, yes. The, I keep wanting to call it show and tell, and it's not. It's show and display, isn't it? He, he basically, he worked really hard to get the rules changed so you could bring in cars that were never homologated for sale in the US, the 959 being one of them. Yeah. Um, and he bought one in, in was it 88? Yeah, really yeah. early doors. Yeah. But then just had to stash it away. And then worked Bill Gates bought one. Yeah, he, he sold Bill Gates one. Yeah, Bill Gates, not a car guy, but obviously likes tech. And the 959 in the late 80s was tech. Tech heaven. fest. And, um, and then worked really, really hard for years and years, like 10 years, I think, was it, to get the, sh- the show and display rules in place so that you could have these cars legally driving the road um, for, like, a maximum of 2,500 miles a year or something. Yeah, and it was so, interesting to hear what his opinion on what it drove like in period compared to all the other 911s. He said and he said, fascinating. It, I know you're hoping to film with him later today. Yeah, I'm hoping to get a walk around of that of, of the resto mod car that he's done. Is it a resto mod? It is, isn't it? Kind of. It's almost like I think his last day is that he's really picky about doing things the way Porsche would have done it if they'd say updated the car. It's almost like a 959 Gen 2. So it yeah. looks very similar, but he just does some sympathetic things. One of the things is sure it's just quite neat because it does tidy them up is. Uh, they delete the side repeaters and then smooth in that so you can't see it. And because they ditched the hydraulic suspension, which he claims was a marketing thing, not an engineering thing, that marketing insisted on it. Yeah. And um, and they get rid of it. And that means that then the filler flap for the hydraulics yep. on the driver's side behind the door is unnecessary. So they delete that and, and redo the, the wing. And then under the engine cover at the back where there's a pull thing to release the fuel flap on one side and the hydraulic flap on the other. They've created a new mould to create a new panel so they can delete the pull catch for the hydraulic flap. It's an amazing amount of effort. I mean, so it, it, yeah, it, it's, it, you need to see it to believe it, really. It's, it's quite something. Uh, I, I don't know if he'd be offended by me saying this, but it's sort of like, imagine if Singer got their teeth into a 959. Mm. It would be along the same vein. But anyway... What's really blowing my tiny mind is that there were seven 959s in that parking storage area, whatever you call it. Then Bruce Canop has got his lovely... It's an old 50s Porsche colour, like a kind of jade greenish infused grey. It's yes. beautiful, the tan interior is fucking lovely. You've felt fallen for it hard. Oh my you? God, it's my favourite car here. Yeah. And then there's another white 959 here, so there's nine 959s here, which, considering they only made 200 and... Uh, 92, 292? Yeah, yeah, including the recreation cars that came a little bit later. I think it was six of those. So, because uh, I was telling you yesterday this story of like, I, when I grew up, because I grew up in Wilmsland, it's a weird place, there's too much money sloshing around in the 80s. So, the Porsche dealer in town, as was then, Ian Anthony, had a 959 in the showroom, a red one, for ages, and I used to just go and stare at it. And then one day I was walking down the street in town, and this red 959 went past, and I was like, holy shit, they've got the red 959 out of Ian Anthony, they're driving on the road. Walked, kept on walking, went past the Porsche dealer. Their red knife on. I was still in the showroom, so I saw two 959s in the Within space of five an minutes. Oh, yeah. wow. Which wow. was mind blowing to you know 13 year old me. But I'm here and I've seen nine. I've still never seen a 959 on the street in the wild, ever. No, well, I mean, it's just, no, just have But he was, he, Bruce, the caliper was saying that, that a lot of his customers actually use them because they are usable. Yeah, so yeah, he did. He was that guy, um, uh, the guy who used to own um, one of the Lotus F1 teams, Gerard Lopez. Gerard Lopez, yeah. yeah. Who um, I've met once, and we had a good debate about whether his 205 GTI collection needed a cabrio in it. He was well, like, I met it's not complete it. without it. And I was like, yeah, but they're no good. And, um, yeah. But he has got one of those, and apparently when he, he got it, he just went off and immediately like, drove 600 miles in it. But I, that, that's so why he's a dude, right? He is that's, a dude. He's, he's a proper car guy. So that was exciting. That was yesterday's excitement, just 959s. And I, I absolutely adore 959s for, for childhood reasons. But then also we went to the unveiling of, what's it called? Of a car name? called the um, 911 GT3R Sport or the GT3RR. Yeah, anyway. well, but then officially it's written with Rensport in lowercase r. So that it doesn't look like, I suppose, like a typo where they've hit, hit R twice by mistake. But uh, I've seen some places just writing it with a cap R. Either way, it's a slightly unwieldy name for a track-only... Track-only. 77 off. Yeah. 
NA not eligible for any race event, you know, like an no. FIA race event because it doesn't need to comply. Mm. And it's a one seater. Oh yeah, which is very unpractical for a 911. And then but it's got no mirrors. It's got so it's got cameras for mirrors, which is I don't know why that's an advantage or not. But anyway, that's what it's got. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's, um, it's got uh, it's it's not it's bodily. It doesn't look very different to a cup car. No, apart from the rear wing. That's, Has it got a longer wheelbase, or have they all got that longer wheelbase? Now? I think it hasn't got a different wheelbase. Um, it certainly doesn't look as wild as that Moby Dick car that they brought out not that long ago somebody um, told me that Moby Dick that sort of modern take on the 935 started off as a project where they said to some of their designers or one of their designers I think went just we want to do something to tribute to tribute to Moby Dick um, and they meant him to just draw up a livery and he got a bit giddy and drew a whole new set of panels for it and everyone went oh shit that's good that's really we good we better make it then but it wasn't the plan originally so uh, I guess this time round they've tried to keep it a bit more sensible I know that uh, what's his name Grant Larson the designer who was there uh, last night giving a speech yeah Grant Larson he said that, that they were sort of allowed totally off the hook but it, I mean it, it doesn't look as wild as the, as the Moby did no it's got the old ag- aggressive cutouts in the wider wheel arches there's carbon on the sort of bonnet area which is deeply recessed um, as you just said cameras instead of mirrors and all that deeply recessed deeply recessed um but yeah, it's it's got this also almost a yoke-like steering wheel. Oh yeah, uh, because I guess it is for track use only. Uh, track what? Sorry. Tra- oh, sorry. Track. I am sorry, everybody, listeners. Uh, track work. Yes. Uh, this is strictly a track work machine. Yes. It is optimized for. Track but obviously, you spell work W E R K. Track work. And you would do that because of the fascination. Yes, it's yeah. So it's a, it's an interesting car. By the time you listen to this, it's probably they've probably all been sold. Yeah, um, sorry about that. And yeah, one, one seat so you can't share the experience with anybody else. Uh, I I mean I'm looking up to the top of the hill at the corkscrew, which is that lovely, incredible kind of almost roller coaster part of the Laguna Seca track. Yeah, and um. Well, when we were up there on day one, getting covered mouthfuls of dust, yeah. <laughs> we, I, I, there's a there's a, nine, a new 911 ST up there, one of only two in America, and there's a Dakar parked up there, super cash on some rocks. I think the, for um, me, those two cars probably turn me on more. Yeah, me too. They're both. I know that I've driven one of those, and it was brilliant. It shouldn't have worked, but it did work. And I've heard that the ST is one of those oh, super. God, it sounds amazing. I yeah, I got proper sort of FOMO, and I. That, to me, that's that's why 911s just shine. Yeah. They just do that damn thing so damn. Oh, forgot which the strictly 1.0 seat, seat, seater RR Rensport Rensport Sport Sport. Um, it's got a 4.2 flat six NA revs yeah. to 94. Right. Total power of 612 bhp and all that, mm-hmm. which is a substantial hike over the, the restricted race cars output of 557 bhp oh. of the cup car. Well, there you go. So. Um, it's just, I mean, not that I'm, And it uh, comes decatted. Do you know why? Oh, I, you can you not have it either way? You can order it with cats if you want, yeah. but it comes with them pre-stolen. Oh, I see. So, so it's, it's Prius minicab in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the guys will crawl underneath it at a show, hoping to kind of zip zip, zip them off yeah. with, a DeWalt, with a DeWalt little grinder and go, oh, shit, I've already, someone's already been oh, here. God, oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, not that I'm biased, but I think that those, those whatever you call rebuilt resto modded 959s, uh, are doing 850 horsepower. Yeah. Um, but then also, that 959, not to keep harping on about it, but it does make me a little bit sad because it's about $1.6 million to have that done, plus the cost of a 959. Yeah, and. Which is what, a million plus, and million and a half. There's not that many 959s. I mean, I know that Singer are vacuuming up all of the 964 yeah. donor cars, and they're. You know, finding a standard 964 is rare these yeah, days. Yeah. But find a bit of Renault now coming yeah. in. <laughs> I think find another 959. It's not like there's loads out there. <laughs> Except here, whereas we've established there's nine. All right, well, um, let's go for a little wander about. And uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll resume this in a bit. <laughs> I know we don't normally have guests on Smith & Sniff, it's sort of a rule, but we're going to make an exception because we're overseas. Um, so we're joined by a couple of people that we know a bit. In your own time, please, who are you and what do you do? 
I couldn't hear anything that you said because there are a bunch of race cars. <laughs> and this is why we don't have guests, because we're shit at it. I said, who are you and what do you do? I'm Alana Cher. I'm a senior features editor at Car and Driver. And um, apparently I'm quite deaf, quite hard of hearing. And our second inverted commas guest. Sir, your name and your occupation, please. Uh, hi, I'm Jonathan Gitlin and I write about cars for Ars Technica. It's Ars Technica yeah. rather than Ars Technica, which is what I... Why is it Ars Technica? So it was started by a couple of grad students at Harvard about 22 years ago, and they were in divinity school doing like history of the religion. And so they were into the Roman Empire and Greek, Greeks and Romans, and it means the art of technology in Latin. Although actually, apparently there's some small syntax error in there, but basically it means the art of technology. Um, but imagine if we had a less complicated name. <laughs> well, imagine that. <laughs> I'm realising that, going around here and introducing the, the people and, go, and they go, what's your podcast called? And they go, it's called Smith and Sniff. And they, without fail, they go, what? <laughs> um, listen, guys, look, we have a situation. Alana's got to go in five minutes. Right, well. So she needs to talk now. Alana, I, the one thing I wanted you to reprise was the story you told us yesterday. We were chatting yesterday about, uh, you're originally, or you are from Los Angeles, you live in Los Angeles, but you have been to other places. <laughs> Johnny once. asked you once, <laughs> twice, the second time to apologise. But then uh, we asked what the most LA thing you've ever seen was, and then you remembered the most New York thing you've ever seen, and that was my favourite story that I heard yesterday. And I, if you would like to tell it again, I would love that. I like that this is going to be my one, my one and only appearance <laughs> on my very favourite no, podcast. No, um, no because you're a very interesting automotive woman, and I met you because of Mopars. That's true. Roadkill related stuff and your yeah. Opal GT, which you yeah, we both have some some real garbage muscle cars. <laughs> we're we're deeply bonded. Yeah. All right, I will tell you the story, and then I have to go and attend a roundtable oh. about Porsches because that's where we are. What, what do you mean? <laughs> I thought I'm here for Renault Lagunas. <laughs> <laughs> Renault Lagunas I, uh, yeah. I, so I did manage at this event entirely devoted to Porsche to end up talking to somebody earlier in the pits who owns um, Old Yeller, which is a Buick powered sports car hot rod um, from the from the 50s, 60s and so I spent all of yesterday walking around with a Buick pamphlet but um, okay I will tell you the story it's awesome it's, uh, there's quite a few of them they're great um, here's the story because because Richard's looking at me with these big sweet eyes and saying please tell sweet, the story sweet sweet eyes please tell the story Alana okay uh, I was in New York uh, I went to uh, art school I was in I was uh, briefly uh, a uh, gallery artist and I was in New York because a friend of mine had an opening and we were at a after party in a loft and it was everything that you imagine about being at a art party in a loft in New York City. Was there a lot of exposed brick? It was it was nothing but exposed brick and cockroaches. That was just all it was. <laughs> and um, and someone this is just like an, one of those overheard conversations. Uh, someone said uh, you know, it would really be a better party if we had some cocaine. And the host of this party said, oh, sure, yeah, call my dealer. Uh, it's in the Rolodex under D for drugs. <laughs> <laughs> D for drugs. And with that, my friends, who I love so much, uh, I have to go do my job. <laughs> Short but sweet. Thank you so much. Al Alana, you're great. Sweet, sweet lady. What? Just tell us what car you bought most recently, because I know you and your husband are forever buying cars. Um, just for you, I bought a Jensen Interceptor Three. Oh yes. Oh. Can you do an EV conversion on it? Absolutely not. I thought I thought you were going to say fuck you, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> you guys told me I can't say the c word, but Jonathan, just imagine I did. Okay. See for it's in the rubber next fine. I'm looking at yes. it. Yes. <laughs> see for next Tuesday. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for that. Uh, now, Jonathan, you're 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 not American, clearly. I mean. I became an American actually last year. Oh, so I am you? now. I'm both. Yeah. No, uh, thank you. Yeah, we yeah, we went back to visit my family for London, in London for Christmas, and I decided, you know, I don't want to have to come and live in London ever again. So I'm going to make sure the Americans can't kick me out. And okay. Finally, went from a green card to a passport. You're one of the few people who, in fact, you're one of only two other people who has driven my electric drag car. That was I, I'm right. still one of my favourite things I've done in this job was you let me drive that thing around. Well, it was very cool. Thank you for letting me. Uh, uh, thanks for coming and featuring. It was a really lovely feature. So, plus I got to meet Brian the cat. You did get to meet Brian the cat. 
my wife still remembers, fondly remembers Brian the cat. Yeah. Well, Brian's lovely. He's not at Rensport. Right. Uh, I don't think it's a great place to bring a cat. <laughs> so, there you? was at least one dog at the track yesterday, and it didn't have ear protection. And I kind of feel if you're going to if you're going to bring a dog to the racetrack, you need to bring it mufflers for its ears because yeah. dogs have very sensitive hearing. Yes. The thing about Rensport is because of the nature of most of the race cars here being rear engines very short exhausts yes. and not a lot of silencing no. a lot of raspy revs oh the, the rasping is there's, there's a yeah, lot so of rasp. rasping yeah it's, you know what I mean that real like shrill straight into your ears also this morning I just feel like uh, I've been at a lightest flywheel contest because <laughs> there's been so much where where and you're like is that it it's, yeah. it's, where? When, it's when you're wandering around the garages like doing photos and looking at cars and someone just randomly starts an engine behind you that you yes. didn't notice <laughs> going there and you know, the, whole, you're, the main thing is just try not to shriek like a baby because you'll look very uncool I like it you look like an old person who's been electrocuted on a dance floor <laughs> you do that <laughs> I've seen it a few times I've seen it a few times out of the racetracks yeah and then you've got to act cool like it didn't really upset you so since he's wandering around here and, and I'm responsible for bringing up on your podcast before, what do you think about the, the great Magnus Walker hats now that you've seen some of them in action? Well, this is what I was hoping to bring up. I don't know where he's gone now. He was like... talking to Mark Webber a minute ago. Oh, yes. Maybe. Mark Webber's over there. Who thinks I'm very weird because I took a picture of his shoes last night. <laughs> Well, see, <laughs> he was wearing this guy called MX. So I went up to him and I took a picture of your shoes, and he just looked at me. He's cool. well, at least you asked permission. I did. I got quite drunk with him, with Johnny, yes. actually, in yes. Copenhagen at the Porsche Tycoon first drive. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. We, we, we spent all evening with him. He was a really good hoot, actually. I was going to talk to him about the fact he's constantly walking around adjusting out of balance Weber cars. <laughs> uh, the bloke, the bloke from Delorto, comes up behind him and just unwinds Gives all him of a wedgie. <laughs> so he kicks, the, kicks the back of his knees at the urinal. And then, and then turns all the other screws on the cards and makes it look like he's never touched one. <laughs> God, for fact, I've just, I've just adjusted this. But um, Delorto man is chasing him the whole time. So, yes, Magnus Walker. Um, we Everywhere we went yesterday, he seemed to be there. I'm starting to think there's more than one Magnus mm, Walker. It's, it's uncanny. <laughs> but what we noticed is that, he, and he's very again today, he has the daytime lightweight hat. Yes, it's straw, ventilated. It is, yes, <laughs> for better cooling. Is that my Isaac edition hat? Isaac uh, straw hat? Yes, I suppose it could be. Would it be? The Isaac pack hat. The Isaac pack hat. Uh, but then he has the he, he, evening bell and he put on the night hat. That which is the one that you pointed out when you messaged in. It, it looks like it's made from old sound deafening sound, sound deafening man. From a, from a car, which maybe it is, we don't know. Oh, it's some wind films and I'm must be, there must be some shop where maybe he, does he make them himself? Is there a particular shop that's like. Well, we were wondering if he sells hats. And they're, they're sort of then, but there's a What's lead the time on them because he has seller? to put them into his bed and roll around on them until they're massive. Right. Or, or just sits on <laughs> they, them. They need, they need to knock up 10,000 miles in 10 yeah, he, right. <laughs> he, he just lets the handbrake off on one of his Porsches and just rolls it forward. So oh, it's the yeah. full weight of a 911 that's passed yeah. over it, yeah. forwards, then backwards. That's, that's the Walker hat guarantee. It's the. It's the well, that's Stuttgart. by Suffolk yeah, they call it the Stuttgart rolling pin. <laughs> and, they, uh, and then it's had the seal of approval. No. And also it looks absolutely terrible because it's been run over by a car. <laughs> yeah, so we I, we haven't spoken to him because, to be honest, well, because we were up at the top of the corkscrew and lo, there he was. And he was just standing in his room. And a couple of people came over and took their picture with him and I was like, we could go over and say hi. But we were a bit worried because we have previously questioned what the point of him is on the podcast and, and whether he keeps keys in his beard keys in his which beard which was like, like David Jones' locker with the octopus beard on Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean yeah. or Caribbean <laughs> as they would say here <laughs> So, yeah, we're, I don't know, we're a bit scared about going to I, I mean, I'm a little bit scared because I keep sending you guys yes, talking yeah, about you're, what he wears. No, you're and I see him everywhere, but is, uh, he's, I mean, he's, he's a really nice chap every time I've spoken to him. So he's, uh, I'd actually really like to meet him. Well, he's not here. No, he's <laughs> he's sure. he's, uh, you're you're going to turn that off into the pit so we can go find Maybe him. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's actually frightened. Uh, I don't want to call him the Grand Wizard because it has sort of 
No, but you call him a wizard wizard. Yeah, just don't call him a grand wizard. Just call him a wizard wizard. Well, like a, <laughs> as opposed to a grand wizard. He's the wizard's wizard. Well, I, I wanted to call him the, the, the KKK turbo wizard. Oh, yeah, no, that's also bad. No, because it's oh, a turbo. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, but See? still. <laughs> no, no, I'm strictly talking about German turbos. That's it. Nothing anyway, racist. Um, well, uh, this has been an enriching chat. Uh, hasn't but, uh, we're, maybe we'll come back later and we'll speak to Michael Swarbrick, or we'll just go, what we want to do is go up and smell him as well. We can't decide whether he's smell smell good or bad. A photo or two for subscribers. Should we get a photo of him? He'll, he'll yeah. take a photo. Yeah. He'll, yeah. Okay. Don't don't knock his hat off. Well, because like, I'm not sure if it, the hair is attached to it. Well, since we've waived our no guests rule, let's carry that on. We're yes. joined by another special guest. <laughs> Sir, state your name and what you do. I am Johnny Lieberman. Uh, I write about cars and I do a lot of podcasting and I sometimes do videos. Sweet, sweet car journalist guy <laughs> with a great name as well. Yeah, love the name. Yeah, love great the name. Sweet name. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the Richards are My son is named Richard. Is it? Yeah, is yeah. It not nice? after you. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> That's weird because my wife is American and she still to this day sometimes goes, I cannot believe I'm married to someone called Richard. She thinks it's like the shittiest old man name. <laughs> because I guess it fell out of favour in the US because of... Oh, Dick Nixon. Yes. Yeah, Tricky Well, Dickie. yeah, that was, that was, I, I thought that was, that was a plus. Uh, the, my, my wife's uh, step-grandfather that she was fond of was named... Uh, Richard, and then my uh, my favorite band has a song uh, called Richard. So, what? yeah, Killdozer has a great song called Richard. Richard, I yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, but great of course song. It's, been many- it's, about, it's about an evil banker who fo- forecloses on deadbeat farmers. <laughs> Oh, nice. in, the, in the tri-state area I love songs song. about evil bankers it's, that foreclose yeah, yeah, yeah. on deadbeat it's farm. really good it's, 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 it's been a, a great song it's yeah. been a huge amount of quality Johnny themed songs over the years though yes Johnny, well I wouldn't say quality there would be a huge amount uh, well, but as Stalin said you know quantity has a quality all its own so I think Johnny's a popular name for, for a half decent song uh, anyway I, I, we're not here to talk about his name we're not well, we're, what yeah, are we here to talk about well, we're not here to talk about cars Corvettes yes <laughs> Yes, exactly. I want to know about the Nissan Altima. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who doesn't? Well, <laughs> we're, we're, people who have Altimas. We're right. actually stood less than a meter away from the very first Porsche. Yeah. The grandfather. This is a, the 356 slash one or number one. Um, I drove it and you might drive it. I'm hoping to drive it this afternoon, but you've definitely already driven it. Yeah. So here's here's my little spiel on it. So, you know, uh, they go to Gmund, Austria, as you do. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they set up a factory, and they're going to build a bunch of three, five, sixes. But the first one, for no one really knows why, is mid-engine. And here it is. And it, it, they build it. It's a prototype. And then small new company, they sell it to a Swiss guy who's into racing, who immediately modifies it. Uh, changes some body work and stuff, and he wants it to kind of, you know, the 550s fighter comes out, and he wants yeah. that. Uh, and Did then watch the Fast and the Furious, and got, <laughs> and got heavily influenced yes. by it. As, that as just makes him change. The Fast and all sorts of Furious. <laughs> yes. From my side, Furious from my side. Yes, and um, and, and Fast and Furious and the sporting fascination. Yeah. fascination. <laughs> the kinematics. Uh, anyways, we, we really could do this all day, uh, but so so. Uh, and then in 1957. Um, the guy who founded uh, Christophus magazine, his name was like von Frankenberg. He was a PR guy at Porsche, and he trades the Swiss guy a, uh, a Speedster, 356 Speedster, gets this back, and it sort of just sits around rotting for a long time. No one's really sure what to do with it. Yeah. Do we restore it? Do we do this? 2018, Rensport 6, they say, all right, here's what we do. We honor the uh, modifications. We'll get it running. It'll look nice. We build an exact replica based on the blueprints. And that's now in the Peterson Museum. But this this car, they pulled it out. And yeah, and it's running on uh, synthetic gasoline. Is it? Yeah, it's on e-fuels. Oh. Yeah. So, Contrast. Which, of course, they're investing heavily in. Yeah, they're going crazy on it. But I, and I, and I had a long talk, and you'll, you might meet them. Um, man's name is Carl Dums, but he's not dumb. He's very smart. He uh, he's, he's their e-fuel guy, and he basically said, like, if you get a microscope and you look at gasoline and synthetic gasoline, a chemist could not tell the hydrofluorocarbons apart. They're identical. Really? And, yeah. 
all it is is you're capturing CO2 that's already in the atmosphere and, and burning it and releasing it versus digging stuff up that's underground and releasing it. So the synthetic fuel is circular in terms of carbon dioxide. Fossil fuels are net positive in a bad way, meaning you get more of it. Yeah. So, you know, yes, Porsche is going all electric, but... There's 1.4 billion automobiles that currently burn gas running around the planet. What do you do in the meantime? Yeah. This is the intermediary step. And it felt just like a normal car. It, it, it's like, it's literally gasoline if you look at it. It smells like it. burns like it. So, so they don't have to do stuff like any, or anything. Th- like and that. that's, that's, that's the, the beauty of it is that it works in existing all existing cars. Yeah, okay. And they can make diesel. And so it's like make, methadone for car. For, yeah. Yes. Because it is trying to get people off the habit. It is getting slowly. Off the habit, but it's sort of the same familiar. Yeah. Make sure you say that to them; they'll love that. Well, they, they, <laughs> you know the German sense of humor. They will love that. So you're a drug dealer, yeah. Um, the, the 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 bad part, though, going with like it works in existing engines is. Since it's totally synthetic, they could make a much higher caliber of synthetic fuel that burns cleaner, that makes more power. It wouldn't work in existing engines. I see. Yeah, so, but they could do that. So Uh, there's scope for change in the future, evolution of it. Yeah, and and as far as this thing drives, I mean, you know, look, it's a car from 1948. June 8th, 1948, it was registered, uh, so it was built just before that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's amazing to have it here. It's really cool. It it doesn't feel like an early three five six. It's, it's it feels different. It, it just feels like a modified Beetle yeah. in some way. Which, it, hang on, it, it, it is. is. Yeah, it, it is, is yeah. a be, it is a yeah. Beetle. Oh God, don't but, get hang on. Let me go look at that. But you know how many times today Johnny's been going? Oh, it's just a Beetle. It's but a beetle. but you know how a three five six. Well, maybe you don't. But if you've driven a three five six, they they feel like a three five six. There's a Porsche yeah. vibe that a Beetle is a little loosier, a little more linear a little thrashier, a little, yeah. you know, you're revving it more because it's slower type thing. Um, and this feels more like that as opposed to, uh, you know, like a 356. Now, you're the first American we've talked to who says 356, not 356. Isn't it 356? Well, I, we don't know. Oh, we, I don't know. We either. always say 356. We no, spent it, yesterday talking to Bruce Canapes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he kept saying 959. I like how you call him Canapé. I, 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 I think it's no. Canapé. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Canapé. He huh? has a world-leading collection oh, he of very sure small yeah. foods on trays <laughs> at a drinks reception. Um, I yeah, say I thought, Porsche, so I have a leg up on most Americans, yeah. but I don't know. i say 356, 911, um, 356. But no. you're quite Euro-spec American, aren't you? Like you, you. I mean, I, you know, I, I have a passport. <laughs> do, you have, do you have clear indicators and stuff like that? Yeah. Be more no, Euro. No, 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 no. Your bumpers are quite neatly integrated. I, I own an Alfa Romeo, so maybe, you know, do maybe. You? Yeah. Have you ever owned a Porsche? I own a Porsche. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah, 914. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. We were only looking at those. There's a whole line of them as you drive in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, my, to rent my, mine's being held hostage by a hostile shop, but that's another story. So. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't think that's another story. I think that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want to say much more. Oh, okay. I, I, I'd like the gentleman to finish <laughs> it. He might listen to English podcasts. I don't know. Should we just say, so. whoever you are, yeah. you know who you are, yeah. okay? Yeah. We'll find you, <laughs> and we're going to bring Johnny's 914 back. Better than when it went in. Yeah. It can't be worse. Uh, it could not actually be worse. Worse. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a rough one. But yes, I own a 914. So, I like following you on uh, on social media. It's never a dull moment. Thank you. Yeah, I try, always... I try and keep it uh, spicy or something. It's always spicy. It's always fact-filled. Yeah, I don't know about facts, but, you know, uh, often, as Bob Lutz says, often wrong, never in doubt. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm impressed you've just done a whole chat. People can't see this listening, but you just did a load of information about this car. No notes, just off the top of your head. Oh, yeah, I got, I, got, memory. I got more. You want more? Well, here. so here's the crazy part. No, I want you to just, like, do the whole of the theme tune to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I've never seen it. <laughs> what? I, uh, Get out of I've never seen it. What? I've never seen it. Oh, my God. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Jeez, this was going so well. <laughs> oh, now it's... Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, no, just like it's funny. So I was, you know, I'm writing, you know, as as journalist, you write a story about it, yeah. and I'm trying to like, why would they make it mid-engine, you know? And I, I have my theories, and then I ran into, you know, Ferdinand Porsche's grandson and his great grandson, and I'm like, Pushed it. yeah, well, as you do, right after I drove it, and after actually after I was writing like my bullshit reason why they made it mid-engine, I'm like, do you guys know? No. <laughs> really, really? Yeah. Ferdy had the best answer. He's like, you know, my grandfather, Ferry, died when I was six. I, I have no idea. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You so, were hoping for a real nugget of information. Yeah. yeah. But so that's, and that's the great thing about old cars, right? Like, no one really knows. Like, yeah. well, you know, why did they did it? Because someone said, hey, make it mid-engine. Oh, no, let's go rear-engine. Yeah. So, yeah. But it is a really neat piece of history. I had a friend of mine's a car appraiser. Uh, I'll call him. Now, I won't leave him nameless because it's such a pathetic answer. So I said, what's it worth? And he goes, um, 20 to 50 million. And I go, oh, yeah, really covering your bases there, yeah. you know, like. And he goes, all right, all right, uh, 35 to 70. I go, so. <laughs> Wait, he's just picking. Just, yeah, I, I, go, I go, let me, I, I go, I think it's between one and a hundred million. You know, like, What's this coming past us, Johnny? What's this thing here? That is... It's a beetle, isn't it? No! It's a beetle. No, but that might be running on... No, that's just, uh, that's a GT3 Cup car. So that's, a, that's a nice one. Yeah. Um, that's pretty good, yeah. It's there's, got a much more refined sound than most... There's, uh, there's a bunch of, uh, let's call them taxis, the new GT3 RS. Uh, it's funny colors that are giving, between races, they're giving yeah. rides. And they got these e-fuel stickers on them. Yeah. So all the cars that Porsche, the company, is putting on the track is filled with e-fuel. Can't tell the difference. So, kind of kind of neat. I don't know. I, I new tech. Maybe they could flavor it. So as it goes by, you get, you know. They could. Barbecue, you, you could do all that, yeah. Sausages. Yeah, yeah. Sausages. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the white sausage. Run, run diesel, run there is a lack of sausage. On top of the corkscrew, if you go up there, they have they sell sausages. Yes. We saw, so, that. saw yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. buy any, but... but no. Yeah. Um, Johnny, thank yes. you for your time. Yeah. This is like some beautiful transatlantic <laughs> podcast crossover. A collab, if you will. I like it. I so, like it. And uh, I, will, it. I will say, if uh, e- either of you are in Los Angeles, uh, I got some podcasts. You guys can, uh, you know... Can we come? Can we come and play? I could, you know, with spikes, I, if I said... Uh, uh, they would, he'd just say no. <laughs> listen, yeah. listen, Spike. Yeah. If you know what's good for you. Oh, wait, wait. Before I go, the, what, what's the butcher board idea? What's our sandwich board? Oh. This was quite good. Uh, this is the first thing Johnny said to I me. Just, I, Hello, I, I think. Uh, well, it's, it's guerrilla PR, really. Yeah. Um, to, get, to get Johnny's uh, podcast chum, Spike, to come to this event... I said, we, you need to rally around and cause some sort of commotion. Yeah. And it involves skin. Yeah. It but involves, what was it? It was naked on I, my knees I, in the Tag Heuer tent. Yeah, oh, dropped oh, your knees. We got the sandwich board. With, with, the, with sandwich, the sandwich. Like, naked with, with the sandwich, sandwich board. board. With the yeah. sandwich board, but on, in body paint, drawn yes. on yourself. You'd have some sort of hashtag like call Spike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, make that, Spike that, come again. That in. will, that, that's the one thing that'll work, you know? Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. Or just like, Spike's he's doing what? We tried, way. we tried everything else. Money, nah, you know. You're still down on your knees yeah. yes. yeah, it's like a yeah. performance art piece yeah, of you can awesome. see Johnny's balloon knot and he's got my name written on a sandwich board <laughs> fuck I'm in the car go go, go. <laughs> you know it was a long pandemic we're all like, doing the best we can yeah. we're all That's trying right. well Richard's convinced that, um, we should... that Magnus Walk has turned up in a Camry because he's just bored of Porsche it's like yeah he's like oh for goodness well, you know I mean I don't know if you know this like he, he honestly has a lot of non Porsches these yeah, days yeah I see in fact uh, I, so the have you guys has driven the Ferrari 296. No, I know. Right, I think it's the most brilliant car ever made. So I'm driving it up to Angeles Crest like we do, you know, on Fridays. And as I pull in, there's Magnus standing there, and I'm like, "Hey, Magnus, enough with the fucking Porsches, Ferraris." Like, yeah, man, I have a Ferrari. And I was like, "Okay, okay, yeah." <laughs> I think, so, in, in terms of looks and spec, it, it, it seems to be one of their best products. I just, you know, it's like uh, you know, uh, you build a better mousetrap, like build a better GT2 RS. They, they did. It. It's just unbelievable, and everyone, you know, they they gather around. They go, "Don't you think it would be better without the hybrid?" And all my answer was, "Oh, I know you've never driven one." 
because if you had that's <laughs> you would all you'd be thinking is you know how do I get four hundred thousand dollars that you have no other thoughts because it's that good I know Listen, you get four hundred thousand dollars get that sandwich board on <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. we talk about Ferraris anymore at this this strictly Porsche event yeah, we're going to get down. clobbered yeah 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 we are going to get hurt good good all right all right boys <laughs> I wouldn't trust myself to drive to the shops. He does the, the I ring. I don't trust you to drive to the shops. Or wearing tassel loafers. <laughs> no, moccasin loafers. Well, moccasin's a different story. What are you lot doing here? Day three of Rents Boats, and we've got more guests. We've gone giddy for guests. Have a you, sir, who are you and what do you do? Hi, my name's Tom Ford, um, and I'm a professional loafer. A shoe. What a shoe? <laughs> you're, a dry, you're a driving shoe. I'm a professional tasseled moccasin of a human being. <laughs> and, uh, also joining us, representing Team America, <laughs> you, sir, name and occupation. Uh, name is Mike Musto, and professional muscle car driver enthusiast, I guess, <laughs> however you'd want to frame it. And you, you're here at this Porsche show by accident, then. No, I, I I own one. Oh yeah, we yeah. got a lift. We, we got this a lift morning. This morning. Yeah, I know. You've got Alzheimer's. They're in a uh, your 996 C4S. Yeah, you have to have one car that works. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's not telling you there's a muscle car show like in the next field, and he just <laughs> took the <right. laughs> he just took the wrong entrance and went. <laughs> These look weird. They must be <laughs> European. Where's the motor? Is that a wheel? No, it's all 928s with LS swaps. And they've all been pushed out of this area. Yeah. <laughs> you Go said something there. really funny this morning. We were talking about you. I used to have a 928. And you, what did you say? You always felt like you were one shift. one shift away from 10 grand. That's, that's, that's the 928 owner experience. I think that's similar to so many other people I've talked to. I it, dude, it is. They're, when they work, they're amazing. Yeah. But you're, you're so close to going bankrupt every time you drive it. Yeah. There's someone we know. I know three of us know. You probably know him as well, Mike. I won't say his name, but he bought a 928 after a long search, and it exploded in a cloud of steam as he drove up his drive, bringing it home <laughs> from collecting it from the garage, and he that, just that took it tracks. straight back on a truck. The tracks. Yeah. yeah. I bought it from the wrong person. That's what happens. I'm, I'm here because I don't actually really like Porsches, so the key to my travels is to try and be brainwashed into liking them. <laughs> And so far, I'm kind of not there. Aren't you? No. Three days in and it hasn't worked. You've driven a lot of... Yeah. You've been a motoring journalist for, what, 20... I've driven all of them you've, cars you've, in the world. Why don't you like them? I guess that's the big question. What, what, because everyone else likes them. It's like when you're a teenager. <laughs> that's nothing to do with <laughs> so you're being a prick about it, then. It's like, go on. Well, no. You know when you're 14 and you have a favourite band, yeah. and then other people start liking that band, then you decide you hate them. I, I'm like, yeah. So, so it's spite. You don't like Porsches out of spite. I'm essentially... Uh, they are the new order of cars for me. <laughs> they just everyone else what? likes them, so I've decided I don't like them. I've got I'm, I'm into lifted things and things with big tires, so I like the Baja gear. I like the Dakar Dakar. thing. I think that's great. But it might be because I've got a dodgy hip and it's slightly higher, so I can sit in it a bit more easily. Or is it the acceptable face of uh, Porsche SUVs? Yes. Yes. It's the Dakar. Essentially. But there is a a Porsche down here that someone's cut the wheel arches off with, like, a a nail file. (laughs) (laughs) It's painted brown. It's a Targa as well. It's a Targa. Why would you pick a Targa? I don't know. But they've also got some sort of oil cooler thing on the back with some fans out of peace. Sees. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. It's like the a ghetto bar. pants on, a, on an external oil cooler, and it looks like it's been plumbed in by my dad, who's blind. Oh, it's God. like, it's just really funny. That car is really cool. I mean, they've bolted the target top on because obviously it's the worst car in the world to do a, a lifted version of. It's, that's my kind of thing. It's incontinent. It's old. It's not supposed to do that. <laughs> do you think if it if it goes if it goes over a fairly large bump, if you had them bolted in the top, it'll sort of bow and then open up again and just pop its own <laughs> pop its own top off? I just like it. I feel like it will squeak a lot. But yeah. I like that. And, and they have to. They're winning the race, but they have to turn around and go. We've got to get the roof. No, the roof. 
they're really expensive. They're really expensive. They're really expensive. Yeah, they're really expensive. The more, like, the more garbage they are, the more you're drawn to them. I because they have stories in them. Yeah, I draw, I'm all on board with that, 100. percent This dude's used like you know the bolts from gates to hold the roof, <laughs> to hold the <laughs> roof. The yeah, and he's just like, like, like off an old rifle. That's exactly what he's done. And yeah. I was just looking at it thinking it's just stickers from like you know auntie's tea rooms, like stuck on the side next to Baja stickers, just living through that car. Yeah, and I was just like, yeah, I bet he's like drunk or he's on acid or something, and he's cut the wheel arches off while you high. Said, you said the wheel arches are asymmetric. They're not the same by the side. <laughs> because <laughs> well, this is back to the jorts, isn't it? Cutting the yeah. jeans down into like jorts that. and going a little high arch. That's going, exactly oh, what it is. No. I yeah. can't, there's that's something that. wonderful about not giving a shit. Yeah, and just being exactly. like, oh, that'll probably match. That'll do. Yeah. And then yeah. you'll be like, <laughs> it's on the other side, no one's going to see it. I don't think he even knows whether they match or not because he's not, he just doesn't, doesn't care. Because they <laughs> never, they're, they're never next to one another, the sides. <laughs> no, that's true. So you can never truly see one and then oh. to see the other one. So, well, no, but he's because he's going to see the driver's side every time he drives it. But then if he drove past a mirrored shop window, he's going to go, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot I did that because I was <laughs> drinking heavily when I did it. <laughs> with, with, with I, think, I think what he's done is he's lifted it, put the tyres on, and it's rubbed once. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's, he's gone, gone right, I'm going to deal with it. Sawzall. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing that too, yeah. I mean, Johnny has seen me cut up a few, fair few cars yeah, with Sawzall. I yeah. once made him. I once got a. What was it? A big wagon, American wagon. It was a Caprice like a, classic. A, a Caprice classic. Oh. But yeah. I made a convertible yeah. one in about a 25 years. wagon. I saw him cut the roof off this family car. <laughs> and that was really, really wobbly. It was so skin cutty and jagged. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. no one wanted to even go near it. It was so <laughs> sharp. <laughs> I've still got scars. Scars. Oh, it's horrible. Is that for blood, sweat, and gears? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, one, it of the, was. one of the shows we did in the States years ago. All of the, uh, all of our one series wonders, where <laughs> I, I presented a, <laughs> I presented a show called Top Gear America, which was cancelled so fast that they revoked theory, my yeah. visa before I'd finished it. Oh my god! No, they didn't. But it was like <laughs> it, it bombed so hard. I'm surprised my career ever recovered. Um, I've become an anti-person in the USA now. So well, they'll let you back in. Yeah. So it's all. It's because they can't, seen... they can't identify who I am. Have you seen Magnus Walker yet? Yeah, he's a variety of hats. Yes, well, he's got a day hat and a night hat, we think. Yeah. Ah, yeah. so yeah. there's like the full Gandalf. Yeah. Yes. And then there's the sorting hat. Yes. And then, then, the what? <laughs> the sorting, sorting hat. hat. It's a Harry Potter uh, thing. The... I don't know. We were wondering if the, the, the hair is attached to the hats, though. <laughs> what, like one of those ginger caps? Exactly. One of those, yeah. <laughs> like we're not a, sure. Like a festival hat. I don't know. Like a Scottish. Yeah. Bobby hat with the hair on it but I think that maybe also that every day he has to sit on the night hat for long enough to make it look suitably crumpled before he can put it on yeah it's artfully rumpled isn't it he, but he's a human being is artfully rumpled like that's his thing is to be artfully creased yeah. I haven't actually seen him today like the past two days it's felt like he's following us around he's no he's drinking around. human blood so he stays looking the right way <laughs> oh man I love Magnus. He's just got a new house, and he's he's got a very good eye for interior design. I see. He's absolutely brilliant at it. Like he's amazing at it, genuinely. All of his places that I've seen have been absolutely incredible. But he's a, he was a fashion designer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was a fashion designer before he ever got into cars, right? Yeah. yeah that yeah. kind of stemmed his whole outlaw yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Because yeah. he used to cut up stuff and make it more outlaw, which is exactly what he does with cars. Right. Yeah. Well, so it's like, but not with houses. And not with hats. <laughs> well, no, he does because he just does. He lower his house. And and put, uh, he's lifted put, his hat. He put the wrong lights on it and one mismatched well, door. He did slide his house into a truck. Did you ever see that video that he did? Was that with the reporter in the Porsche and he slid sideways into a truck? No. <laughs> no. You, you've never seen that? What? I have seen that. Yeah. So anyway, we've got one day left work. You've got one day to uh, to be won over that Porsches are not new order. Who are? You're wrong on that as well. But anyway, welcome. What did he just say? I've got an idea. I don't know. I feel like I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I think I've got some kind of fever. I'm feeling very strange. I'm going to see New Order in two weeks' time oh, in yeah. Sheffield. What, just to no, not Leeds. enjoy them. I'm going to. But I'm going to enjoy them. I'm going to look at the back. I'm going to stand with my back to those fuckers <laughs> and I'm not tapping my feet. Hang on. So, following on from if things are popular, I'm not interested. If you turn up and there's other people in the gig, you're like, fuck this, yeah, I'm going. I'm not going to do it. It's not Peter Hook either. It's, it's actual. Yeah, 
order. Well, is this is this why you were actually delighted that Top Gear US got cancelled because that meant it was not popular and therefore better? Yeah, That's I think, you, I oh, think it's a classic now. I've achieved my aim yeah. now. It's like you need to do a special edition. I keep doing special edition series of TV. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're like super limited. So that they eventually, when they are appreciated in 50 years' time, they'll be worth a lot more money to the people that own the licenses. <laughs> If you wanted to turn up at this show in a Porsche, because you, you had to, what, what, I, could, I think uh, I know what, yeah, what, 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 what would you turn up in and go, I don't, I don't feel, and I'm not annoyed with myself, I'm okay with this. One of the Russell Bill uh, Baja 959 things that's basically a trophy truck with a 911, wide arch 911 body on it, or one of the, stu- not stupid, but like nicely done off-road KNs. Yeah. I, I just think they they look useful. Yeah. And um, they're really good off-road because I've off-roaded them quite a lot. Yeah. Anything 911 shaped, I just feel like one of the crowd. Yeah. So, you know, but... What about one to, nine, so to 924 Dakar? No one's done that. Well, I was thinking that. A 924 has been in the States bouncing around. Oh, really? really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Seriously. Were oh, they yeah. like oh, Baja right. cars or Dakar-y? They were all like Dakar. Like, they're all jacked up. They're running like, you know... 30 by 10 and a half and stuff like that. You see, I like I like yeah. soft. I, I like soft. It's not going to be fast enough to get it hard, <laughs> so it's fine. But like, you might get a slight <laughs> tire chirp if you revved it to 6,000. The skill level. If you get the bigger tires, you don't have to be such a good driver. Yeah. So I like really big tires because then it's proportionally to how well you can drive the car. So anything low with wide, sticky tires, I don't like. Yeah, I mean, I like all this stuff. Have you got a car of the show, you lot? Yeah, that's, that's green 959 over there. Oh, yeah, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce Canapes. I just like it. Yeah. Bruce Canapes. Yeah. yeah. Bruce uh, Canapes. His, his trays of small, nibbly food. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Canapes got 22 cars here, and he, he's been um, he's been lending them to Porsche because they're so significant. And I was like, I want to be rich enough to lend my cars yeah. back, back to the manufacturer. Yeah. Well, when you get your 924 that's been lifted, yeah. but only at the back, so it looks like a dragster, no, you can lend it back front. to Porsche. <laughs> only like at the California front. Squat, the Cali- what's oh, like Carolina a, Squat. Like a pre-runner thing. Yeah. Carolina oh, yes. Squat. Yes. It's like a new thing. So 924 pre-runner. Eyes stands. to the sky. Yeah. You, you could do a 924 pre-runner, and that would be affordable. I could. If you, I'm, my project car at the minute is, uh, I can pick one of the world's most boring cars, and everyone has immediately gone, you're going to lift that and put a roof rack on it and lights, aren't you? And I went, Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> well, uh, I thought, as we've just talked about a lot of Porsches, can we talk about cubicle toilet doors? What, the fact that we've, well, we've covered this on the podcast before, but... We have, but I, I've just experienced it again. No, I'm going to leave now. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks for joining us. Are, are you less organised than that? Yeah, we're all... We are quite... <laughs> yes. We are quite bad. <laughs> I would occasionally make notes on my phone if I see, like, if I'm driving and, and you, you observe a certain scenario and you go, that that's funny, I should I should mention that. And if you don't write it down immediately, you'll forget. It's gone. So I sort of pull over and I just write a note. And, then, and that's about it. The Saturday night at Rensport. We're, go, we're going to wrap this up, but before we do, we're joined by our final guest of the show. Yeah. It's only bloody Andrew Frankel out of off of the intercooler. Off of the intercooler. <laughs> yeah. Please welcome. welcome, welcome. And we've, uh, full disclosure, we've already been in the hotel bar and we've had quite a good chat. I wish we'd recorded that. Amongst other things, the qualities of the Naked Gun films and also the worst hire car you've ever driven. <laughs> and I, was, I, thought, I thought I shouldn't bring this up because <laughs> we were just talking as we started rolling the, the machine that you prepare more for your podcast I think than we do because you have topics and actually worst hire car would be quite a good topic yeah it's a good phone in isn't it it's a very good phone, phone in it's an everything phone in it's not a swap shop no like Jer- Jeremy Thingy of uh, Radio Ooh. 2 could do that one so you, you just go straight into your podcast yeah, well, yeah we, we so. give ours entire minutes of thought oh, but I, I it, it sounds doesn't seem to me that like no see that's Dan He's very, very, he's very plausible. Okay. I mean, the entire thing is Dan basically supporting me. And just sort of, yeah, because he's completely unflappable. And the best thing about it is I'll just talk and talk and talk, and then I'll just stop talking. And he will always just pick it up. So you'll reach the no through. He is just like a perpetual safety net. So I can just talk (laughs) rubbish. 
Yeah. And then when suddenly I just run out of rubbish things to say, he'll just smoothly come. I don't know how he does it. How long well, have you been in the business? You've been in the business a long time. 120 years. <laughs> um, did you review the All Days and Onions when it was current? You God. did. The All Days and Onions. I bet you drove one of those in period. What are you talking about? You've heard oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, a, oh, it's a veteran car. Yeah. Called an All Days and Onions. What? Yeah, you've never heard of All Days and Onions? I've never heard of all. Why haven't I heard of all? I don't have veteran cars. Well, then. I did the London to Brighton run once and. Yeah. Because no. it was in Dog's Mass. It was just one of those things which you're quite glad you've done. Yeah. without having any desire ever to do it again really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does always look because it's, isn't it it's like next week or something it's always November why does it always November so, well yeah, because like, they, they, they need to make sure the weather's going to be shit exactly this yeah. thing. why is it always yeah, cold but, and wet when they do it it's like they're, they're causing the, misery it is yeah because you're in an open top car know, that does no more than 12 you're driving miles to the hour, coast and you just get racing wet so there's a, there's a hill on it this is absolutely true and I was in a 1900 Napier Okay. And most of the time I wasn't driving, I was just in the back getting cold. Yeah. And, and, and you, <laughs> and, but in a 1900 car, if you're sitting in the back, is there some kind of pedal you have to work that's actually the fuel? Well, hang on, wait, bear with me, because this didn't involve working. So you, you get to this hill, and you're going slower and slower and slower, because it's very, very obvious that the car is going to stop. Yep. Okay? <laughs> and so you have, the only thing you have is a chock. Okay? Oh, oh God! So <laughs> I have a chock. And so when we stopped, the bloke who owned the car said, Chock! Jump out and jump chock out. it. No, no. You jump out and chock the car in front, which is rolling down the hill towards you. Oh, because oh my God. you're not the only veteran. So everybody doesn't. You don't chock your car. The etiquette is you chock the car in front. Oh, my God. To stop them rolling into your car. And then once all the cars on the hill are chocked, then you all get together, push the one at the top of the queue to the top of the hill, and then you all get pushed to the top of that, and then you continue. So it's, but wait a second, if you're the last car in the line, you're relying on somebody who's in a focus to chock you. That's so good, they have got a chock on board. I think probably maybe you're on the flat and you chock, I don't, I don't know how it works, I'd kind of lost... Um, but how do they the get going again? I don't understand. Well, you get pushed to the top of the hill, and then you, you get start... Pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody pushes all the other cars to the top of the hill. So not like a race car that we've seen today, where you, you know, they push them to start them to save the clutch. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the car's not even trying. You just, you basically no, no, shut the, the car you, off. You've given up at that stage. Yeah. Oh, the car can't do it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whose idea was the London Surprising? It's an awful idea. It's, I mean, it's the fact that they do it in November just for the misery of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, but on a brighter note, yeah. Ren Sports, yeah. have you had a nice time? Oh, it's, just, it's just so... What's the word? Proper, authentic. What is now? It would be very easy to go. What's what's the best Porsche you've seen over the course of the weekend? But I'm going to ask you, what's the best non-Porsche you've seen over the course of the weekend? I've seen some a lot of Honda monkey bike, really yeah. quality early monkey bike pit. There's bikes. a JDM Acti. Oh, okay. Four wheel drive. That's quite good. Uh, that's being used as a pit car. I don't think I've seen anything as, that's not a not a Porsche. There's oh. not many. And also, we parked. We got a lift in. Uh, this morning with Mike Musto and uh, we had to park sort of out over the other side of the track and then walk through and we saw a couple of Ford Flexes didn't we? Oh, Ford I love a Flex yeah. I love a Flex and then Mike said I have you driven the Flex? no I actually haven't driven have the you? Flex have you? no well, I, but Mike because we were a bit like is it any good and he went well the so later one had a, that three and a half Turbo V6, yeah. the EcoBoost, which is in the F150. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. He said it's quite rapid. Fact, it's shit, well, you can chip it, and then it's like, yeah. It, he went, it's a sub five second north 60 car. He was like, it's a tick over four seconds. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's four wheel drive as well, so it absolutely digs in and fucks off. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, and I said, does that make it desirable? And he goes, no, no, that's still really cheap. Well, did he also, he said, I can't remember how he described the way it goes from North to 60. He used a very, very American way he, of describing it. He, yeah, he's a New Yorker in a great turn of phrase. I think he said he gets out of the hole or something. Yes, he does. He gets out of the hole oh, in, yeah, a, in yeah, four and yeah. a bit. No, which, never had the pleasure. Well. Well. Oh, I'm just trying to think of the... You've driven loads of really, like, unobtainium Porsches. I have. You? Been a lucky boy. You have? Yeah. Because I've, I've read or seen you do it. Yeah. Mm. So tell me about... A pinch me Porsche moment. Nine one seven. Have you driven all those? I've driven. Oh God, driven he's going to say like six or something. You've driven all of them. All no, of I've them. driven three. Have you? Yeah. Three. Fucking hell. Yeah. You I've swine. Driven, I've driven. Richard Atwood had one. He was the first person 
when I was editing motorsport in about, no, about 25 years ago he had a, it wasn't the car that won in 1970 which he drove but it was identical and the same livery and everything and he took it to Silverstone and his only this is absolutely true the only thing he said to me when I was about to drive this extraordinary thing was don't get out until you've driven it properly really? yeah and I saw him at the Festival of Speed this year and I was reminding him of this and he said yeah but you never did drive it properly did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow because he kept on saying go on get have you driven the property and he said well I think I have now get back I was watching you know, get back and I went round I, I drove it as fast as I could and he wasn't happy because I wasn't driving it fast enough but you were terrified and you were borrowed because you were borrowed I was kind of terrified um, just from the, the, the entire idea of driving a 917 it's you know it's inherently but actually the driving experience of the car was nicely sorted and it was it was fine it was just very, very fast. Did it feel like you were driving in a hammock, though? Because it's sort of like... Yeah, it does a bit. Yeah. Does, or, no, well, actually, not with that one, because the only way I could get in that one was to take the seat out. Out? Oh. Out, yeah. So I sat on the deck with some sort of foam padding around me. It was the only way I could drive it. Jeez. Um, yeah, but, but the other ones, the open ones, the 917 32s, I've driven, uh, both of them. Um, yeah, they're a bit like that. That's hell. Have you driven in 959? Yes. Damn it! Uh, he's properly got... It's oh got it's exciting. Wow. Wow. Have you so, did you see have you seen Bruce Caliper's nine five nine? Yes, here? yes. Yeah. Have you yes. been around it? Oh yeah. god. Has he, he talked to talk you talk about, about it? Friendly. Yes. Yeah. It's fucking pornography that car. Have you smelt it? Oh, it uh, smell you well, need to open anything. a door, stick yes, your no, head in it. Yeah, oh gorgeous. my god. It's gorgeous. But also it's it, like that you know it's like that old Connolly Hyde smell you used to get yes. in Ferraris thirty years ago. He made a point of telling us that the roof lining is suede, not Alcantara, suede, yeah. proper yeah, suede. There's a lot of suede. Dead yeah. animal in there. But no, it's the it's the bit it where because they put it onto passive suspension, so they delete the hydraulic filler flap on the driver's side, but then under the engine cover there's a little uh, release for that flat. I've seen it. I wonder what so that they was. They delete yeah. that, they but they off. had to get a mould made to repress that panel without the without the release. They keep the one on the other side because that's the oil filler, isn't it? Is but that right? Okay. Yeah, and then the attempt. It's mind. What is so great about it is it's you. You, see, you look inside it. If this thing's got 850 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. It's got almost twice as much as it would have had. And you look inside it, and you never know. Yeah, it's no. so understated. And they don't do anything to the four-wheel drive system transmission because it was so over engineered. Yeah. He said the first thing I thought well, we're going to have to go through that entire thing, and then the, the boys went and had a look at it, and they went, "No, it's fine," because it was designed for Group B, and it was designed to have 800 horsepower. Yeah. It. So it was massively over engineered. And he said they've never had a failure. But you, so you've driven a 959, you've driven a like stock, stock 959. I've driven a 961 as well. What the? Fuck. Get out! Get out of this podcast! No, I've driven now. the nine six one because there was only one. Yes, because they, 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 they caught fire. They did catch fire. They yeah. did catch fire in a fairly major way at the Moy in eighty seven. Yeah, there's some on board. The, 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 the bloke, Case Nirop, Dutch driver, he was unlucky enough to have a camera in the car when he downshifted, possibly from fifth to second. Oh, oh shit! Possibly not. He is quite touchy on the subject. <laughs> um, um, and uh, yeah, and the car kind of um, swapped ends and went in and caught fire. And it's all there on YouTube for anyone who cares to go and watch it. Oh, shit. Um, but they did rebuild it, and yeah, they did let me have a go. So it's basically it's got a 962 engine in it. It's not quite a 962 engine, but it's got that sort of 650 horsepower. But no downforce. Tiny little wheelbase. It's it's Twitch. a genuinely terrifying car to drive. <laughs> I mean, There's unbelievable one. amounts of lag, and then suddenly it just goes. And the moment you get to a corner, it just wants to go straight on. So you just think, "Oh shit, I better kind of slow down a bit." And then it wants to spin. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of the very, I, very busy? I yeah. think the source of the fire was actually an enormous Sony Handycam that ran VHSs that just got hot during the. Because if it was the eighties, how else would the onboard the cameras game. working? There's no mini cams, no GoPro. Um, you, uh, we should wrap this up soon. But you, uh, uh, Johnny's just bought his first Porsche. I didn't yeah. know that. I sold yeah. my, Don't my get too first excited. Porsche last year. But you, well, hang on, no, I want to hear about Johnny's Porsche. <laughs> yes, fair point. You, we all want to hear about Johnny's Porsche. What have you Porsche. got? It's my, it's my, it's the cheapest Boxster in Britain. Yeah, have a guess what? how much. It's, by the way, it's not been crashed, and it does actually function, and it does have some service history. And four or five figures. Uh, four. 
four. Yeah, yeah four. 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 Eight. For a Boxster? Yeah. No, 1,900 pounds. For a 2002, <laughs> uh, 2007. For the benefit of the listeners, Andrew's eyebrows have raised quite substantially. 1,900 pounds. Does it work? It, it, it works as long as you clear its OBD codes every time you turn it on. And it, um, it has service history. And it's not been crashed. So, and, and what's the plan? Uh, I'm gonna, I've got to rebuild the module which of the brain where it's a bit broken, so you don't have to clear its OBD codes every time you turn it on. But the it's, long-term plan. When you say you're going to do that, yes. does that mean you're going to do that? <laughs> I've got found, found a hairdryer. Found a guy. <laughs> found a guy with a soap, <laughs> soldering iron man. I found him. He's good. But yeah, it's, a, it's about 500 quid to sort the module out, which will sort all of its little issues out. The rest of the cars are wonderful. Uncrashed. Uh, you get to tell them about some of the brake lines. Had new brake lines for the last MOT, all of the solid brake lines, and service history up until 4,000 miles ago. And how many miles of them? 124,000. That's not bad. No, it's not, to, and it's not a 1,800 shit. quid? <laughs> yeah. 1,900 quid. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And we were talking about this. And of course, it's a flat six. It's not like I've bought a 924 that's been put in a hedge. You know, it is a flat six. It's have a, you have you got a Porsche at the moment? You have no. you had a nine. I had, I had no. Well, I, had, I had a 968 Sport, yeah. did. which I bought because I wanted to drive a 918 Spider. <laughs> right. Is that the only reason? Yes, it's literally the only reason. I oh, don't wow. understand the connection here. Okay. Right. So, Porsche had an event in Scotland. Oh, that and they one. They were bringing a 918 Spider along, and the only catch was you had to turn up in your own Porsche, and I couldn't. Cause I didn't have one. So you were like, shit. So I thought, I'd better buy a Porsche. And a mate of mine had had this 968 Sport sat on his drive in the Isle of Wight for years. And his missus had been saying, get rid. Get rid, get rid. And a a family of rodents had been shacked up in it for a while. (laughs) Um, And, uh, yeah. And you just went, right, sell it to me. Sell it to me. And and was it all right? Was it bare hanging? It was all right. It was. It, 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 it didn't take much to turn it into a reasonably decent car, and I had it for four or five years. And like all the nice cars I've ever owned, its role in my life just became to make me feel guilty about not using it, right? Because mm-hmm. I was always in other stuff. So yeah, but I sold it about four or five years ago. I yeah. went on that uh, same thing, Porsche. Probably the following year, Porsche said, "Oh, well, you own a Porsche?" Because I, I had a 997, <laughs> and is it uh, come? come to Scotland and drive the North Coast 500 or bits of it and, and I told Johnny I was like I've been invited on this thing to take my 997 to Scotland to, to drive around with some other journeys I've got Porsches and he was like right I'm coming on that and I was like we haven't got a Porsche I'm going to buy the cheapest box I did, I, I did. It was he was a while got ago. no front bumper on it it's absolutely hanging I'm going to do it. and then couldn't find one couldn't now find one finally it comes to pass yeah you've got a 1900 quid box to I did at the time I did email Porsche and say I've got a Beetle that passes doesn't it that's a Porsche in inverted for, for reference Andrew for the past three days we've been wandering at the paddock and, and uh, John has been going basically anything flat basically four, a Beetle anything, Beetle anything flat yeah. four so, so, no, yeah, it's sort of like um, RSK yes basically 550 a Spiders yeah. sort of Beetle basically that's a Beetle, a Beetle. It's a, yeah okay yeah okay so you need to do something epic in your box, don't you? Yeah. You need to go. On, you need to go on an implausible journey, in it, don't you? <laughs> do you think so? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you loading me yeah. up with, with tasks. This just reminded me when I speaking of cars that you felt guilty about not using. I, I had the same thing with my Rover seventy five. That I, I bought a Rover seventy five because I had a couple of what sort of Rover seventy five? Uh, it was a two and a half connoisseur. A connoisseur. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because if you're a connoisseur of the Rover seventy five, you have to get the connoisseur. And, Two and a um, half connoisseurs. But now I had this plan because the, I like the idea. The really. context was I had uh, two long termers from Evo back to back, which was uh, which were um, I had a smart roadster. And then Sweet. what did I have after that? A Suzuki Swift Sport, maybe. And they're both quite hard riding cars. Yeah. No, wait. I think maybe it was I had a Fiesta ST. And. I was like, I've had enough of shit ride quality. I'm going to go and buy the best ride quality I possibly can. And Something I bought a Rover 75. It was a beautiful car, ride quality wise, and in many other ways. A sweet car. But then, you know, in our weird world that we inhabit, you then end up having lots of borrowed cars, and it's sad. You don't use them. No, That's but why all the cars I own are, you know, just pub cars. 
Yeah. Because that's the only time you use them. Yeah. Well, I didn't even use that. I lived in London at the time as well, so it was like a lot of time I was getting the tube. It was okay, I wasn't, you know, so, but, but, but I started uh, dating my now wife. She, at that point, lived in Los Angeles. And Did I, she think you were a paedophile because she said he got rid of the No, do you know what? The thing is, when she then moved to the UK and, and she never rode in that car, and she was like, what well, <laughs> did she refuse? No, she just, we just never used it because then I had another long-term and I had press cars and That's the one. And, and she was like, what is that car that you never... I didn't, it was weird that she never been. But there was a point at which I suddenly thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it shipped to New York and I'm going to drive across America to Los Angeles to visit her yeah. in my Rover 75. That's, it didn't happen, did it? No, it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the image of, I can't even think of the route that you have to do because it's a bit weird. I think the fastest route is actually a bit of a sort of... Well, there's like a northern loop or a southern loop, isn't yes, there? And yeah, the, and the southern loop is a kind of lazy U. Yeah, yeah. And I suddenly have this vision of sort of being in the middle of Texas in the yeah. summer of the road. Like, like, and you call the Yeah, and going, uh, sorry, have you got a uh, head gasket for a KV6? <laughs> Get out of here. And they're going, is that a connoisseur? It would be easier to LS swap it, I think, at that <laughs> yes, point. So, you, could do, you could do that mid journey. Right. You could do that. <laughs> Stay well, convert it to rear wheel drive while you're there. And well, I mean, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Just go and go and get Copy tea, yeah. ideas yeah. from the makers of the Rover 75 with their later days. I bloody like them. I still like them. Well, yeah. Yeah. Rover 75 and their derivatives. And the V8s. The V8s. Yeah. 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 I've still got time for them. I mean, I'm, I remember testing one when they were new. Yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. And I thought, it's not actually very fast. It's an awful lot of engineering. I'll tell you what it was. It was a car that knew what it was for. And I love that about cars. I don't care yeah. whether you're talking about, you know, Ferrari F40s or two CVs. It doesn't matter. It was... A, what I like most about cars are cars that know what they're for. And a Rover 75 absolutely yeah. knew what it was for. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. It's yeah. true. It did. Yeah, because it was, it was like... With, it, but it, unfortunately, it was sort of out of kilter with the times... Then and now, yeah. everything's supposed to be sporty. Yeah, and the management yeah. of the company that creates, well, bought it. Yeah. yeah. But it was absolutely an unsporty car. Yeah. And I well, that's it. great. Though I took one to <laughs> a really early press car. I took it to a Max Power meet. What? What, you were yeah. over 75? Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Because it was just like, it was a press car, and then we went and filmed at a Max Power meet for, for old Top Gear. Oh. But it was, I quite liked it. It was like sort of an ironic way to go to a Max Power meet, because it was a, absolutely an un-Max Power car. Especially if, they, if the police gets called, which is what happened. Which is what Max happened. Power, you could just... Sit in the row of the 75 and recline well, that's the, the thing. seat. You're the, just, yeah, yeah, look, you're completely not going yeah. to be. Oh, it's just an old man's car. Yeah. No. That's the thing. And it was that was the one where. Is there ever, is there ever been a? Less suspicious car than a Rover 75. Less suspicious. Well, I mean, it depends what you're suspicious of. I, uh, well, we, nefarious activity. Uh, uh, I think anyone's ever committed a crime in a, Ro- Lo- in a Rover 75? Well, it's certainly never been a getaway car. No. I don't think a crime has ever been committed in a 75. I don't think. Uh, it's a sort of question. like tax fraud, but I'm. Un- Without do you find this? Are you, are you all knowing this? Well, this must be very clever as well. Oh, they're absolutely brilliant. And do you, if you mention stuff like this, then we, we, someone will. If someone emails someone in. Someone will. Yeah. We we uh, last week or the week before we were talking about how aeroplane loos were. We've had so many messages. Oh, aeroplane from toilet people. systems. Yeah. Just people sending us diagrams. Yeah. Honestly, we've had. Have you got time to enlighten me? Oh no, not now. No, we're going to have to. We're going to okay. have to do a whole we'll show you the diagram. Yeah. We'll go back to the bar after we've done that. Yeah. You can do but uh, I, 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 if we go, has anyone who's listening, a, a serving or former police officer, have you ever had a crime committed involving <laughs> relatives? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get some messages. Okay, um, not a bit. VH don't count. No. no, VH don't count because obviously there's, there's something naughty about those, and you have to be deranged to buy one. But yeah, um, yeah, probably still not a murderer. Uh, we should wrap this up. Um, this has been a bit of a. a an unusual episode I'm not going to do usual three things because I'll be honest I haven't prepared anything but Andrew thank you for being oh, our boy, final guest for this episode um, Andrew of course is, is from the Intercooler go and listen to that as well it's yeah. another excellent car podcast and there's room for all of us in this world and if you like actual proper people who know what they're talking about I would suggest you listen to the Intercooler not this shit but um, this has been fun um, yeah. and from what was your favourite States. film that you starred in? Don't was start another <laughs> conversation. <laughs> was it was it Ronin? Or was it, <laughs> it was it, definitely Ronin. Uh, I'm told that Leon's a bit dodge. Leon, Leon's a, a very good film, but there are elements of mistrust. If you, know? you don't know what Andrew looks like, you probably do. But it, it's it's a stated fact that he looks quite like Jean Reno, <laughs> the actor. And in fact, is this true that you have been accosted by people who think you are Jean Reno? 
George Fulmer, the very, very famous Can-Am driver's missus, came up to me today and said, what is the name of the French actor you look like? <laughs> Today, today, this That's very been, day. Wow! Great. And I used that, and I said, "I'll tell you if I can speak to your husband." Which went fair enough. And, and, and I spent half an hour talking to George, one of my heroes. As a result, of that very conversation. Is he one of your heroes? Oh, George Fulmer. Yeah. We we shared a, a car with him to the track. We basically like taxi yesterday. with him and his wife. He is the man who ended McLaren's domination of Can-Am. And he, and he never intended he didn't even know he was never meant to be in the car it was only because oh don't get me started it was only because Mark Donahue got injured and they didn't have a driver anymore and someone said well I don't think George is doing much and so they stuck him in a thousand horsepower 91710 kind of car he'd never driven before and he made mincemeat of everyone and ended about five years of McLaren dominance should have done fair shitting heck George Fulmer is an absolute legend but did you talk to his wife yeah She's brilliant. She, oh my God. She is okay. brilliant. Well, she, the she, life she's led is... Oh, I don't know about the life she's led. Well, all I know about her is that she's got the same problem as he and me have, in that she was always mistaken for Doris Day. Was she? Yeah. Right, so very quickly. I used to fancy to Doris Day as well. Yeah. She was cabin crew for United Airlines. Right. She lived all around there. She lived in Australia, South Africa. She lived in Ripon in North Yorkshire for a while. <laughs> and when she quite said, random. She lived in, in, in Ripon. She effortlessly slipped into a Yorkshire accent. Is that right? Yes. She, she honestly did. Incredible she honestly woman. Did. Yeah. Like, she, oh, she, she was and, good fun. And she I, I, just, I, I just called her Doris all day. Early 70s, she was offered a 914 we said, uh, for $800. She, went, she said, did you buy it? She went, no. It's kind of like a Ford Pinto at the time. It was laughing stock. She bought an XK150 instead. Well, that's quite cool. And her dad Imagine brought her. her up. And there wasn't one. For, uh, yeah. Toy, to, tooling around in an XK150 yeah. in yeah. the early seventies. Looking late like 70s. Doris Day. Looking like Doris her Day. Dad brought her up to be able to fix cars. So she probably did her own. <laughs> she did. For a listener, Andrew has just <laughs> done a face that. Uh, she did her own oil changes. We know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we we really should wrap this Wonderful. up. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, Andrew, thank you. Uh, for, thank you, guys. I've really up. enjoyed yes. it. Yeah. And um, we'll do this all again next week. And Sadly, still, we will. I we think. will. Yeah. But a bit, a bit different. Yeah. Um, until then, goodbye. Bye then. Bye. I love you. Thank you. You know just what to do. Like and subscribe and review. You know just what to do Like and subscribe and review You know just what to do Like and subscribe and review